What's up guys, I'm Ashley Jenkins and Ubisoft has accidentally revealed that an upcoming DLC for Assassin's Creed 4 will make Blackbeard a playable character in the multiplayer portion of the game. The news comes via a list of DLC trophies in which one, called Queen Anne's Revenge, requires you to perform an acrobatic kill and a gun kill in less than 10 seconds as the infamous pirate. Two other trophies indicate the addition of other playable characters, known as the Jaguar and the Orchid. And four trophies for the previously announced Freedom Cry DLC demonstrate that story-based content's focus on freeing slaves. However, this mysterious Blackbeard's Wrath DLC has not yet been officially confirmed priced or dated, so expect those details to come later. A PS4 update for the game is also available, which enables the game to play natively at 1080p rather than playing at 900p and upscaling. According to associate producer Sylvain Trottier, even when most of the engineers had started to work on other projects, some of my engineers continued to work on Black Flag and they even developed a brand new anti-aliasing technique. That technique, he reveals, will also feature in the Xbox One version. Speaking of which, Microsoft Game Studios chief Phil Spencer has revealed that while we shouldn't expect any huge announcements about new games in the lead-up to Xbox One's launch this week, they may have more to share in December. At Spike TV's newly renamed VGX, for example. In fact, he believes there's so much to talk about that he doesn't want to hold it all free three, but says that there are timing considerations. He explains, We're being real thoughtful about the news that people want to hear and also the right time to announce games so that we're not too early. Most likely, we can expect to hear more about Remedy Entertainment's mysterious quantum break if he has his way. It may be before the end of the year when we talk more about what the story and the gameplay is. We have a pretty good piece that I'm trying to coerce people into putting out before the end of the year, he says. He's also spent some time with Insomniac's new Xbox One project, Sunset Overdrive, and is happy with how it's progressing, saying, We're playing a full section of the game and feeling really good about the open world gameplay that they've put together. Xbox is also sharing more details about features like their HDMI in, which will allow you to play any HDMI output device, including TV boxes or, say, competing consoles, through Xbox One. So you can get to your other entertainment while you're also chatting with friends in an Xbox party or Skyping away. By default, this HDMI in will only have stereo audio, but they already have a beta going for surround sound, which you can enable if you choose under the troubleshooting section of the TV and One Guide settings. We should note as well that this beta only applies to HDMI in. Games, DVDs, and Blu-ray all have full surround sound support already. Sony is also making some progress with their PlayStation 4 and have released their 1.51 mandatory system update, which you may have downloaded without realizing it since the option to automatically download updates is enabled by default for consoles in North America. This update improves system stability and also tweaks the UI to make better distinctions between downloading games and downloading game updates. Moving on to game news, an official announcement for a new Tomb Raider sequel may be incoming sooner than expected. Earlier this week, a PS4 version of Tomb Raider popped up on the Italian version of Amazon but was quickly removed. Square Enix said they have no details to share right now, but hinted that an official reveal could come as early as December 7th at Spike TV's VGX. EA is also making hints about their plans for future Star Wars games. Back in May, EA signed a deal with Disney granting them exclusive rights to Star Wars games for the next 10 years, with titles to be developed by Visceral Games, DICE, and Bioware. We already know that DICE is working on a new Star Wars Battlefront game, which is expected around mid-2015, but they may also be working on other Star Wars titles. EA's Blake Jorgensen revealed that DICE is working on early stages of some games to be revealed over the next several years, and also said that EA has no plans to base their games solely around the Star Wars movies. The beauty of the Star Wars franchise is that it's so broad and so deep you don't have to do a movie game, he says. You can do a game that's very focused on the world that's been created around Star Wars. However, with Star Wars Episode 7 scheduled for a December 18th, 2015 theatrical release, they also want to align with Disney's marketing power to boost their own signal. Could that mean the Battlefront will slip back to surf the movie's hype wave, or could we see another yet-to-be-revealed game in late 2015? He is not forthcoming with those details just yet, but we'll keep you posted. And that's the news today. How are you planning to use the HDMI in on your new Xbox One this weekend? Shout out in the comments below and let us know what you think. Then check out roosterteeth.com for the newest episode of The Patch, covering all things next gen.